Hello and welcome to livealittlehigher.com. We're less than two weeks from Rosh Hashanah, from the awesome day of judgment. We're finishing this year 5,781 of the Jewish calendar. Uh, we're wrapping it up. And this week we read Parashat Kitavu. In the book of Rabbi Itzhak Ginsberg, The Inner Dimension, he has a beautiful explanation of one of the mitzvahs that is um, allotted to us in this parasha. And one of the mitzvahs that is given to us in this parasha is that we are commanded to walk in Hashem's ways. So in the Torah portion of Kitavo, we read the blessing that God grants the Jewish people if they keep the Torah, if they listen to His voice, he, and we keep His, his ways, we, we, we fulfill a mitzvot and we learn Torah and we live in a wholesome, holy way. And, um, and Hashem promises us to, to give us everything and more than we ever need. But also, we see that if we do, we do not uh, incur, God forbid, to His voice, then we're going to have curses in our lives. So, as it says, God will elevate you to be holy people to Him, as He swore to you if you keep the commandments of God. Your God, and you shall walk in His ways. It says you shall walk in His ways. And all the nations of the world will see that God's name is called upon you and they will fear you. So these verses reveal a very deep connection between God and His chosen people, between us, the Jewish people, and Hashem. And uh, one would think like, yeah, we're always commanded to be humble, to keep ourselves humble. But here it's talking about Jewish pride and uh, how these two feelings, having Jewish pride, walking straight forward and, and emulating Hashem is not contradictory to being a humble person. So we see here that uh, Rabbi Shneur Salman of Liadi, the Alter Rebbe, he teaches, it is a positive commandment from the Torah to walk in God's ways, as it says, you shall walk in His ways. This is what the, the sages taught regarding this commandment. Just as He's called gracious, so you too shall be gracious. And, uh, and just as He's called compassionate, so you too should be compassionate. And just as he's called slow to anger, you too should be a patient person and not have a anger management issues. You should also control yourself. And in this way too, with all other human attributes, one must resemble his creator and spurn the evil attributes as and choose good. So what it says that we should walk in Hashem's ways, what it means is that we should emulate Hashem. We're not going to be Hashem. We're never going to get to become God Himself. We do have Mamesh, a little spark of Him within us, but we're not going to be God. And we're very complicated, very, um, I would say, very sophisticated creatures with a lot going on within ourselves. But we are commanded, and if we are commanded to, to walk in Hashem's ways, which means to emulate Hashem, this means that we have the ability to be able to be like that. So he says here, Rabbi Ginsberg, one attribute that is included in the commandments of walking in God's ways is humility. Maimonides states that we must aspire to reach extreme humility. We should be extremely humble people. But what does it mean to be humble? What does it really mean to be a humble human being? It doesn't mean that you're going to be the doormat of your house where everybody puts their feet and cleans their, their dirty shoes on. This is not humility. Humility means that you acknowledge and you value your God-given um, a soul, that you value who you are and you value that Hashem put you in this world because He needs you here and He trusts in you and He believes in you. So that is being humble when you don't throw away your godly attributes. The 16th century, century Kabbalist Rabbi Moshe, Moshe Cordovero, who was known as the Ramak, describes how to emulate God according to each of his 13 attributes. So this, this month of Elul, 
is a month in which the 13 attributes of mercy are out. Hashem is in full force with his attributes and he mentions humility first. The, uh, Rabbi Cordovero, he writes, the Almighty is an insulted king who suffers, suffers insults. He explains that people use the vitality that God grants them. Imagine Hashem gives us everything he gives us. We're all, we are what we are because Hashem gave us everything to be. The good, the bad, the bad is supposed to be turned to the good. All these attributes you have should be used for, for elevating Hashem's name in this world, for revealing Hashem's uh, name in this world. Yet, people trample on Hashem. You, they are rebel, they go do things they shouldn't be doing. They don't appreciate their life. They don't look up to God in their lifetimes. And yet, despite this tremendous insult, God continues to vitalize them every day of their lives. Imagine a, a, a thief, Hashem tomorrow, he still is vitalizing this person to be able to be alive. And he's waiting for him to repent. So we see, states the Ramak, is the extent to which we should humble ourselves and bear insults. So, on, um, so Maimonides mentions another attribute, just as he's holy, so you should be holy. Hashem is not asking from us to be spiritual beings. It's nowhere in the Torah to do the spiritual. You don't see that word. What he asks us to be is to be holy. And this attribute is rooted in the above mentioned verse. God will elevate you to be holy people to him. The verse concludes with the promise that this will come by merit of walking in his ways. God's gifts of holiness reflects the quality of our service to him. So. Hashem wants us to be holy because He is holy. And because He is holy, we are commanded to be holy. So what does it mean that a person is holy? What does it mean a person becomes holy? Holiness means that you, you are transparent to the purpose for which you were created. This is what holiness means, is that you set yourself self apart. You don't go with the flow, you don't go with what's going on in the world, you go with Hashem. When you follow Hashem and you do everything that He wills you to do, because that's why he's, you're here in this world, is because it's His will to have you here, to build a, a dwelling place for Him in this world, in this lower realm, and you live up to your purpose, then you are a holy person. So the concept of holiness is a central focus of the Torah. Here it denotes something unique. The verb God will elevate you is remis reminiscent of the phrase at the end of the blessings in the Torah portion of Behukotai, and I will lead you erect. One of the qualities of a holy person is that he's erect, he's, he's straight. And this instills fear in our enemies. And so the Torah commands every Jewish male to, de to put on tefillin. This is a mitzvah of the Torah. Every Jewish man uh, from 13 years and up should be putting tefillin every day. This is something they should be doing. And so the head, the tefillin, the phylacteries that go in the head, express the positive upright Jewish state and they influence our ultimate victory against our enemies. You know, the, the, the tefillim, they go in the head and they wrap them around their left hand. So it's the, the intellect with the emotions, with the heart, which is the seat of the emotions, but the intellect, the seichel, the intelligence is on top of your emotions and they control the emotions. So the feeling, what he's saying here is that it is the, 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 the weapon to protection for ourselves. And in, in, in 1967, during the tension field, uh, that preceded the Six Day War, uh, the Lubavitcher Rebbe, Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson of, of blessed me memory, he emphasized on the import importance of men donning the film, and he announced the film campaign. So what he did was that he was sending uh, the, the shluchim everywhere to make sure that men, Jewish men, would put on their tefillim. And there's a story that the Egyptians were coming to attack Israel and the soldiers all had their tefillim on and when they saw it they they ran away they could they, they thought it was a, a weapon of mass destruction and they ran away so we see here 
that uh, one of the of the miracles that happened in that war was that the men wore the tefillim, especially the Jewish soldiers, and God's promise that the enemy will fear the Jewish people was realized during the Six Day War. So I would like to suggest, uh, I don't know how many men watch this video or women, uh, but if you're a wife, make sure your husband puts on the film, your children, your boys. If you're a man, you know, start doing it. The Jewish people right now are in danger again. Everything, the world is upside down. We're being humiliated. We're being, anti-Semitism is on the rise. So this is our weapons. Our weapons are not machine guns. Our weapons are, are these weapons that Hashem gives us. And it's, if we should do it because we can do it. You should do it because you can do it. It's your mitzvah. So we see here that uh, that don't in the feeling uh, was what assisted and gave uh, that miraculous divine salvation to the Jewish people in 1967. So thus taking an upright stance contradicts our aspiration to be humble and lowly, long suffering and submiss and, and submissive to the to the furthest extreme. Here we must di differentiate between personal arrogance with Jewish pride. So our, our upright stance when we stand up for our Jewish pride doesn't mean that we're not humble. Standing up for your Jewish pride means you're humble. So God bless the Jewish people to stand erect and unite without feeling ashamed. We should never be ashamed of being who we are. It's a gift. Hashem made us the, 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 the Jewish people, the big brother of the world. Everybody looks up to us. That's why they hate us so much, because we are the moral, moral compass of the world. And people don't want to live a moral life. So when they see a Jew, it reminds them, oh, hello, I'm not doing what I should be doing. And it, it bothers them. So more profoundly, holy means separate distinct from mundane reality. And Hasidut refers to this quality as an essential majesty. By definition, anything holy is majestic. You see a Sefer Torah, you see Tefillim, you see a Mesusah, anything that, that uh, is majestic, is majestic. You would not put it in the floor, you would not step on it, you would treat it with utmost respect. In a holy nation, the realization of that majest majesty is in our upright stance. But to be majestic and to be upright, we need to bear our responsibility. We have to live like we're supposed to live and not go off the derrick and go the other way and, um, and make it all about ourselves because it's, life is not about us. Life is about Hashem. When you live your life thinking about the king, the king of kings, and what he wants from you, and you live in that way, then you're living in a very humble and majestic way. So we see that in a state of holiness, the governing reg reg regime does not need to trample or validate its majesty. Like you have a king that is an upright king. He doesn't need to be a tyrant with other people in order for him to be able to, to maintain his majestic stance. A person that is righteous, that is upright, that is noble, that is kind and generous and merciful, and he, he, he has these attributes, he doesn't need to step on other people to be uh, on top of the world. The world will bring him up. The same way, when we live in such a way, the whole world will bring us up. So holy, holiness is an essential quality of God who is elevated and holy, yet he's con con concomitantly omnipatient and tolerant. He resides with a downtrodden and low spirit. This is the paradox expressed in the phrase, wherever you find Hashem's greatness, there you will find humility. And that's why Hashem is quiet, he's a quiet force within us, and we have to really listen. We really have to quiet everything around us to be able to tap into God. And, but the, when the whole world is screaming us at us, buy me, buy me, get me, get me, um, 
uh, what gives me pleasure, pleasure, pleasure for the body, and we're only looking at these things, then we cannot really connect to Hashem. So people are granted control and they cling to God. We have this ability to be able to choose to connect to Hashem. This is our free will, is to choose to connect to God. And so, and so when we do, we are given this gift and this attribute of holiness. We are, this is a gift that Hashem gives us. And when a Jew is able to live in such a way, he will be able to reveal their essential majesty by standing erect. It's not so much what he says, it's just the being, that person, his being will tell you that he's majestic. And nonetheless, they remain compassionate and merciful and, and they have love and kindness and they're slow to anger and you see their midots, you see their character traits which will say everything and God willing when Mashiach comes all, all the nations of the land shall see that the name of God is called upon you and they shall be in awe of you this is in Deuteronomy 28:10. so we're finishing the year it's not late connect to Hashem go to him and be majestic, be that person that you're supposed to be. Why would you want to be like the rest of, 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 of the world? Be a Jew, a proud Jew. And, the, and that is the whole point. So I want to wish you a blessed week. And remember, live a little higher. Thank you. Thank you.